Hi guys, we have got a comparison video for you today because this is probably the number one question I see asked all the time. Can I fit this motor in this train? Will this be better than that one? Well, I'm going to show you the difference. I'm going to show you the difference between a five pole Graham Farish motor, this one, it's not skew wound, it's the old school five pole version. I've simply just uh, cleaned it up and it runs beautifully versus an 8x16mm dual shaft cordless motor. This one's rated up to 12 volts. That's okay for me because my track voltage is 12 volts. Um, I don't think you'd really have any negative effects actually if you ran it on 16 to be honest. Don't take my word for that, but they can take a, they were just, it would just heat up quicker. So you just want to keep an eye on your temperatures if you were running this for full chat all day long, it probably wouldn't like it. But what I'm, going to, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop the shells off so you can see the difference. The main reason I've gone cordless on this one is because I fitted sound into the loco and I needed just that bit extra um, space to, to fit it. On this class 20, I've left it as a 5 pole because there's no way I'm fitting sound in this unless I do some drastic action by shaving the chassis apart. But anyway, we'll get the shells off and I'll just show you what's inside. Hi guys, here you go, I've got the shells off. Now this is the class 20. Um, the five pole motor's in there, as you can see. I've fitted a decoder onto this, and I've actually fitted my own gears because the, unless you get the really old Graham Farish gears, they suck, they crack apart. So I had enough of that. That's why it's a good contender, versus this one, which I've fitted the cordless motor into. As you can see, it's just hiding in there. And um, that's, this has also got my uh, gears on it as well. So I thought it was a good comparison to, to show you the difference. And I'm only taking the shells off just so you can see how different they really are. Which the chassis, um, the inner part especially, if we just hold that up, it's the same thing. It's just these end caps that are on the 25 that make it fit the shell, I guess. They're just wider chunkier ends um, but yeah let's get into a test video now I'll put the shells back on and we'll, we'll get them on the track and we'll see what their top speeds are and they crawl like right we're gonna pull away now and just see what the slowest crawling speed with 13 coaches can be I would say it's right about there Maybe one up, just jumping a bit. So it's pretty impressive. I'm just going to jump back now. We're going to go to the class 20. I won't show you all the coaches. <laughs> okay, now this is going to be the crawl with the five pole Graham Farish motor. And this class 20 chassis is pretty much the same as that class 25 I've just shown you with the coolers. So we'll see how. How, how uh, we can pull away uh, our slowest speed so that's the slowest it will go and that's pulling all for 13 no problems there what we're going to do now is just do a high speed run and just see whether the high speed is different okay so this is full chat with a cordless motor in essentially the same chassis as the class 20 And let's see what the class 20 does. Okay, this is a load up test. Now I'd advise you do not do this because this could burn your decoders out. 
I'm a bit reckless, so let's give it a go. But what I've got here are basically two rolls. These are about uh, 200 grams a piece. So actually, this train's nearly towing half a kilo. Um, <clears throat> we're just going to do a pull-away test. So just remember, this one's got the coolest motor in it. So I don't think it's going to crawl very nicely, but I, 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 will it pull it? I don't know. Just let it ramp up its speed. <laughs> You might see smoke, so uh, for your entertaining pleasure, give it a bit more. Oh, it's moving. No way. Oh, it's not happy though. Oh, she's slipping. She's actually slipping. Look at that. Yet, yeah, please don't do this to your trains. This is not a good idea. I'm going to slow it down a minute there. Really. We'll pull it. Let's see if it pushes it. It might push it. So I was trying to pull it. I'm just trying to give you an idea of the motor comparison, but without putting weight on the train. So it's just got to push a heavy sled. So it's just ramping up now. No way. It's not slipping. Or is it? Ah, uh. right. I'm gonna. I'm calling it there. You can see it's struggling, um, and actually pulling was the issue because it was struggling with the um, the friction actually on the track. Let's just take that off. We'll put the twenty on now. I'm not really expecting much different um, because actually, what you're now getting into is the weight of the train. So. <clears throat> If the train weighs more, it's probably going to pull more. So it's not really a fair test, but I just want to show you that both motors are more than capable of pulling weight. And let's just hope that the 20 does the same. So here we go. We're going to go forwards. Um. She's slipping. What we're going to do is just go backwards. Oh. Yeah, I would say <laughs> that's not. That's not really struggling. Uh, well, it is. That's heavy. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it quits there before I pop a decoder. Do not try that. These things are quite heavy. There. Yeah, that's about four hundred key uh, four hundred grams, I would say, if not more. Four fifty. That's nearly half. That's that's basically half a kilo. <clears throat> so that just gives you. <laughs> Gives you a testing idea of what I've just done there with big locos. It's happy enough. I would say stick with your five pole motors at the end of all this. In conclusion, because if you go cordless, it just seems like they just don't have the grunt lower down. Now you can make them run silky smooth, but then you could do the same thing for a five pole motor if you wanted to. These are quite forgiving motors uh, as long as you like clean the commutator contacts with like a, a q-tip with a bit of alcohol and just clean them now and again um, if you get oil on any motor on the on the brush brushes it basically makes them cease to exist uh, like run they won't run uh, like I said I'm happy with this one I'm also happy with my class 25 because most of the time this is just going up and down the track going jug 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 it's not really a shunter for me um, and it makes the right sounds when I want them. So my sacrifice for crawling ability, I would say, because top speed, there isn't a lot in that either, really. The sacrifice of crawling was putting the, this coreless motor in there. Uh, Longevity-wise, between the two, well, Graham Farish motors have kind of proven themselves over the years for how long they run for. I can't prove this thing for years because... 
I haven't had it running from for years. I've had it probably running non well collectively probably four maybe four and a half hours this thing's been running and I haven't had any issues so the, the, maybe the only other thing that you could consider here is the coreless motors actually use less current as well as the five poles over here now these are quite thirsty beasts but with that you get a better torque and um, that obviously translates to over to the train so what appears to be very similar trains chassis wise definitely and the way I've done the gears because the motors are that much different and I can I think it's because of the diameter of the motor if you if you could fit a, a thicker coreless motor in easier than how this one goes in I reckon you'd have probably you'd probably end up with more torque than this class 20 but but in short what I would say is if you've got a five pound motor in your loco and it's working fine don't bother with a coreless just don't do it maybe if the court if your bog standard motor packs in or maybe if you've got a three pole motor then maybe yeah I would say go for a coreless motor but then you can always upgrade the grain farish models up to a five pole motor with your three pole motor setup you just have to buy a different armature which is probably the way I'd go um, this this and others with standard motors are absolutely great and um, as you'll see this class 37 and the Britannia over here the reason I put a cordless motor in this one is because I had space issues the reason I put it in the Dapol was because I had space issues and actually whilst I've got you here I'm going to show you this class 47 that is a heck of a beater um, it's really beaten up but I love it and I'll show you why because it hasn't got a five pole, it ain't got a Graham Farish motor in it. I went another way with it, so I'll show you that next. Okay, so you're like, all right, so what's he done with this then? And I'll take the shell off in a second, but I'll, I'll just run it and see if you can hear the difference, which I would imagine you're gonna, because it's pretty uh, gravelly. <laughs> Here we go, so. It's going forwards. doesn't sound the best but it's slow isn't it I'll just go forwards again and what I'll do is just show you how slow this can go I'll take the shell off in a second and I'll show you what I've done. This isn't a coreless motor. This isn't a Graham Farish motor either. This is just a canned motor, 3 volt, from a tiny little gearbox I had kicking around. And because I'm on DCC, I can cap its voltage that it will see. I'll just zoom out. And the sole reason again uh, this one's going to be milling around in a shunting yard going backwards and forwards. But the reason I did all this is because I could have sound in this one too. Now I've also put auxiliary lights in this cab. You might just be able to see them. There you go. I've got to put actual running lights on it, but I'm going to take a shell off and just show you what's inside this one. Right, this is 
with the shell off. Um, I'll give you a breakdown of what I've done in a minute, but I just wanted to show you this moving with the shell off. So you can see that, I'll zoom in, I've changed, I've put any old motor in this. Um, we're just going to move forwards. It's not perfect by any means, but you can see how slow that's moving. And it's this hasn't got stay alive in it. That's just the speaker. That's the Hornby TTS module. And what I've done is there's, you'll see it in a second, there's a prop shaft running all the way along underneath, well, worm to worm, underneath the motor there. You see it? This is a good way of knocking the speed down on the locos. But in doing so, what you're doing is you're raising the motor up, which isn't great. Now, you could put the motor below that shaft, but I didn't. I was just getting patient for the post, so I was waiting for a cordless motor to arrive. That's why I put this thing in there. So, yeah. I'll show you. Right, we'll kill the power, and I'll, I'll give you a little talk. I'll probably repeat what I've just said. On that, that shaft, I'll try and zoom in. It just runs under the motor. And now the motor is actually geared down to that drivetrain. Now, um, I'll just disclaimer alert, this isn't literally me resting on metal, it's on a, a capped on tape, so it's not going to short out. But what I wanted to do was just see if I could gear down the trains, because I wanted to really crawl the locos, which on this one is great, I can. And you can see the old motor is gone. And I put this one in. And um, another reason really for me doing this was because I didn't have a cordless motor at the time. I just found any old thing I had and I just chucked it in. And I thought, what's the worst that can happen? And actually, it's pretty good. Um, it would probably run okay if I had this motor as like a dual shaft output. Um, however, what I'm going to do with this one is actually put this motor in it this is that cordless motor i keep talking about and i use in all my videos this is the one that's 13,500 rpm and i keep referring to this one because it syncs very nicely to the hornby tts chips that those chips like to read the back emf from these motors very nicely and like i say you can get the, the higher speed one from ebay but um they seem to work a treat for me so that that'll be coming out and I'll put a cordless in but I just wanted to show you you can literally chuck any motor in these trains and if you do it right they will work just fine and it depends what results you're after because this is this loco is dead slow but actually it's pulling capability if it's if it was heavy enough would be quite a high um so this is just a general this is a canned type motor so I would avoid doing this because it's probably not going to last very long. And if you're on uh, max speed, is is like cruel on on that class twenty there that I just showed you. So I would avoid doing this, but you can pretty much put anything in them and they will run okay. But really, at the end of the day, in conclusion to everything I've shown you so far, especially with Graham Farish trains, the five pole Graham Farish motors are just fine. Unless you need that space for sound, I wouldn't bother changing them to callers. Just my two cents, but they they run just just fine. So I'm hoping that helps you out. Um, now I've just I put a video up on the class 43 where I've put a callless motor into that loco. Now my sacrifice of putting that motor motor in that train was high um, top speed. It's, it doesn't run as fast as the stock one would with its stock motor. I'm okay with that because my layout, when I build my layout, it won't have a, a high speed run on it. That's not what the, the, the layout's going to be. So that didn't worry me too much and I was willing to do that for that motor. Now I can revert back to the old motor if I wanted to. So it's all sort of weighing up your options. I'd stick with the standard motors if you can. If it's avoid, if it's not avoidable, and you want to put sound in, and the motors, you think, oh, I can get just a couple more mil with that motor, then yeah, go callers. They're they're all right. But 
I don't think they are as good as the five pole motors, but just. So there's probably better motors out there, so you know, have a play. But I'm hoping this puts some of your queries to bed because, yeah, but I, I find that these are actually harder to control with the decoders. You, they are lacking somewhat as much back EMF as you'd get with the five pole motors. And uh, I mean, it, this one's okay, but that's not going to last five minutes because that's only a three volt motor and I'm running 12 volts through it. So, you know, I'm really hoping this video's helped. It's probably not clarified everything, but at the end of the day, if you've got a five pole motor in your train and it's working, just leave it in there. It's That's, that's probably as good as you're going to get. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> thanks for watching. Um, and just uh, be on the lookout for another video. I've got quite a few to do. In fact, what we might do is change the motor in this one. Uh, or we could paint that. Or we could paint definitely not that. But we could weather that. Uh, we've got class 52 over there. I've got to have a show and tell with you about. Uh, but there's yeah, there's a lot going on. <clears throat> um, I would subscribe if you're interested in this sort of thing. Because I, I just do it all the time. Uh, lights and carriages, that sort of thing. Uh, I've got lots of things to show you. So thanks for watching again and uh, hopefully see you in the next video.